Hi everyone, let's go ahead and get started with the NumPy data types. You can create array with the predefined data types. Earlier we had seen some array creation, but we did not define any data types while we were creating these arrays. But you have options to provide the data types while creating these arrays. If you pass a D type as I, that means integer, if you pass it as a B, that is Boolean, otherwise you can pass as unsigned integer, the value which ranges from zero to unsigned integer range. Let me see it. I don't exactly uh, remember. Int range, the value starts from, you know, uh, these, these are the unsigned integer, zero to 65 or zero to this one depends the number of bytes we are using. Then we have a float, a complex float, time delta, the time delta where you have a difference of time to define, a date time variables or object, O means the object, which says that it is a string or any other kind of the objects which might be unknown to a numpy and then it has the string it has the unicode string and then fixed chunk of memory for other types. <laughs> All right, let's go ahead and create an array and investigate its data type. For example, I say here a equal to np dot array. Inside this, I need to pass here a list or set to create the array. I say here one, two, three and four. And this array is created, but we did not pass any data type. So by seeing this data, we can say that it is the integer, but we don't know definitely what type of the data this NumPy array has created. That you can know by typing here a dot d type. D type says that the data type of these objects or the items which are inside this a numpy array. It says that it is int 32 that means it's a 4 byte integer and if we provide here a float value inside this numpy array then this data type changes. Now you see we just provided only one float value even after that this data type got changed to the float 64 because if there is any float value in your data set then it will automatically convert all these values into a float value. So it got converted all these value into a float value and in a python if it is 0, 0.0 then python does not print these values it just put there a dot to signify that it is a float value. Let's go ahead and create here a string and then see the data type of the string. It is very important to see the data type of the string. For example, I have here the apple and then here I have a banana. Uh, it has a very interesting fact which I'm going to show you. Do you see there, once we printed this, it says that it's a u6. All right, do you see there? So earlier we saw that u is a unicode string that is okay, but what is this 6 that we don't know. This 6 actually says here that the maximum number of the character present in this string is a 6 character. Now you see there we have a 5 here and 6 here. If we make it 7 then let's go ahead and see. You see there the unicode character 7. So basically it says that the data type of this numpy array is u that is unicode string and then this 7 says that the maximum length of any item which is 7 currently for this particular list. All right, let's go ahead and see how we can create a string type of the data. All right. So we did not pass here any data type and it automatically created here Unicode string. But if we pass here a data type, then we can tell NumPy to, to, to convert it into a string. For example, if I say here S, 
you see there the capital S was for a string. Now if you run this, it says that this is for string and the maximum number present there that is the 7. Let's go ahead and see if we if we can convert this as the integer data type and we are going to pass here d type equal to i that means it is integer i4 means a 4 byte integer and if we run this it says that invalid literal for int with base 10 for apple basically it is saying that this apple cannot be converted into integer and this 4 denote that we are going to we, we were going to convert this into a 4 byte integer like here it was saying the maximum number of characters 7 one character is represented with one byte that's mean it's a 7 byte representation let's go ahead and if we convert it 0 and 1 then what happens here you see np dot array is 0 and 1 and d type is i4 that's mean we are going to convert it for a 4 byte integer let's go ahead and run this now you see there this got converted into an integer and we can print here the data type of this array which is int 32 all right so with the help of d type you can control the data type of the generated array Let's go ahead and provide here f which denotes a float. Now you see there this 0 got converted here into a float and then this got converted here into a float value as well. What happens if there is 0, 0.0 something like this and we want to convert it into a float. It works perfectly here. And if I, con if I try to convert it into an integer this does not work because if you have seen previous lectures where I taught you a crash course for a Python in that I told you there if you have a float string and you want to convert that into a integer then you cannot directly convert that into an integer you need to first convert that into a float and thereafter you can convert that float into an integer that means to get it converted into an integer you can simply type here a dot as type and then here you need to pass here i which is integer so whenever you have a float string you need to first convert it into a float and then convert back that float into an integer let's go ahead and try to convert now this integer value be equal to something like this if we have let's go ahead and convert back this to a float you can simply write here as type f that is float you can simply type here s which is actually a string you can simply type here u which will say that it's unicode string and 11 says that it's it got converted with the 11 byte string all right uh, 11 byte unicode string all right and this one also got converted with the 11 byte unicode string let's go ahead and convert this with the boolean and if you convert it here bool that is the boolean a zero says that a false for a boolean and one means it is true you can also convert in a string by typing here str which is actually a string there str is a unicode string there all right Let's go ahead and see if you have array then how you can sort your array in ascending and descending order. For example, you have array A equal to np dot array. I'm going to just create here 1, 22 and some random numbers here. All right. This, ra this random number, I want to sort it into ascending order. It's pretty much simple. You can simply write here a dot sort. Then this a will be sorted. The result will be placed here into a itself. Then you can print a. Now you see that a is sorted into ascending order. Ascending order is that where you get the low value first and the high value at the last of the index. 
But what happens if I ask you to sort this into a descending order? There is no parameter to pass in a NumPy to sort it into descending order. So there is work around to sort it. Alright. So you can write here np.sort and then I'm going to pass here minus a. A minus a says that it will be sorted into a negative. But these minus we need to remove. That means I am going to again put here a minus. So this sort hand notation works as a sorting of array into a descending order in a numpy. Alright. This is all about in this lesson. Thanks a lot for watching this. I'll see you next one.